Hi, good evening, everyone. We're just waiting for everyone to make it into the meeting. Hello, everyone. Good evening, Carmen. Hi. I was having such Good difficulty. Good evening, Carmen. Hello. I like getting like three different computers. I thought it was my computer. Oh. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I, like I, was Hi, good evening. I, was, I was like, what's going on? All right. How's everybody? Good, how are you? Doing? Good. <laughs> All right. Hi, Paco. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? How was everybody's summer? Uh, my, mine was good. We, we had a baby. So ours has been busy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We now have a, oh. a three-year-old and a just under a three-month-old. So there may be screaming and crying in the background. I apologize in advance. <laughs> oh, so you you you've been busy for real. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yes. How wow. have you been? Well, I, I haven't been that busy. But I've been busy, <laughs> but not that busy. Ain't that wonderful? Well, congratulations, congratulations. That's number what? Number two? What? Number two, yeah. OK, good. And I think that's enough. <laughs> Got our hands full. Uh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> All right, how many members do we have? And forgive me if there are new members. I don't uh, acknowledge, but I really don't even know exactly who the new members are. Hi, Suman. Hi. I think technically maybe I'm not officially on the committee yet or something. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Cal, Callista forwarded me the email because uh, I wasn't on your email list. So maybe I may have missed something over the summer about uh, signing up again. Yeah, I don't think you uh, completed the app. Okay, yeah, my I'll, fault. Oh, I'll send you the link. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll do that. Sorry about that. No problem. Yeah, well, I have basically asked all my uh, members to be at it because we all had them finish business. So, uh, uh, you know, I like continuity so we can finish what we started. So then I have to start explaining all over again. Somebody's going to come on and want to know what is the triangle, Washington Triangle? What is this? <laughs> so continuity. All right. So do we have a, let's see, we have a coin. Hello. Hi. Hi, Kalista. How's everybody? Good. How are you? Good. Well, I hope everybody else is on. I, I really didn't notice um, who was <laughs> on and who wasn't in terms of the members. Uh, so I apologize if I didn't get to uh, bring it to your attention that there was people missing from the email. But I'm glad you were able to make it. All right. So who, who are the new members of the committee? 
Any new members on? I don't see any of the new I'm just names. Visiting but, today. Hi, Carmen. But we have a few visitors Hi. from from Hi, Carmen. Hi. Yeah, we have a few visitors from the Lefferts, and I believe um, from New York Avenue. Yes, hi. Yes, how you doing? Yeah, about the signage on New York Avenue. So we yes. have some visitors, some community visitors tonight. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, my name is Liz Jackson. I'm from Lefferts. Okay. Hi, I'm Molly, and I... Um, my husband sent in a letter earlier today about a traffic situation on Lincoln between Rogers and Bedford. He's oh, at work. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, okay. so I'm here for him. Okay, perfect. <laughs> He's at work. And I'm Rebecca Milestone, and I live on Lefferts Avenue between Washington and Bedford. And I'm here to talk about putting in speed bumps. Yeah, I think you sent you send the copy. You sent the letter, did. right? The yes, okay. that was me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hmm. it was interesting that you got a letter indicating that it was approved because we had somebody else, I can't remember her name right now, that um, had also asked for a uh, speed bump and that was denied. So it's interesting that on the same block, you all have a denial and an approval letter. <laughs> from two different constituents. So that is very, very interesting because we we went over uh, the previous denial. Uh, so I was shocked when you got the letter saying it's been approved because he's like, wait a minute. So but we'll we'll get to the to the bottom. If I, I did send it on to DOT, we're waiting to hear from them. Okay. Uh, because they claim that it's been approved and um, they're waiting for um, board nine to uh, give letter of support, but they did that same thing on Union Street. We fought with, for Union for years and they denied it, then they approved it, then they claimed that it, it was being held up because Board 9 didn't submit when we originally submitted the application to begin with. So we'll get to the bottom of it. If, if they need a letter, trust me, we'll send them a letter ASAP because you're not the only one. We've been, Francesca uh, Alepo, also the president of the Black Association, she has. For the for the speed hump, it's been a, bunch, a couple of people on that block. So yeah, no, the traffic the is crazy. Yeah, it's I live around high. the corner on Sterling Street, so I know. Oh, okay, I right you know on. exactly. Yep, I'm on Sterling Street. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah. So I, so I know. Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, Kalista, so what we got? Suman, I think we Jeff is on good. Um. So see, good thing I asked my old members to come back or it would have been just me and the guests. <laughs> Cause I see names here that I don't see them here. And I'm like, okay. But anyway, uh, we're going to uh, to begin again. Thank, thank all uh, the old members for uh, wanting to come back. I welcome you back uh, with open arms. And uh, our guests, glad to be back. Happy to have you here, uh, so you can share with us uh, your personal experience and, and whatever difficulty you're facing, so that we can get you um, help. Um, originally, we had a representative from a DOT, Diana Soriano, confirmed to attend, as well as Alexandra Gergis from. Uh, the Department of Design and Construction also confirmed that agenda and everything. And then all of a sudden one had a conflict, the other one said that she can no longer come to the meeting. Uh, she can only do the uh, service cabinet meeting. So, but it doesn't matter, we'll, we'll just uh, move along. Um, so that the agenda has kind of been changed because I wanted them to hear personally from each one of you what the situation is so that they can hear firsthand and not just get referred from us. But anyway, it's been referred. So uh, I'm gonna open the floor for you guys to just share with us, you know, what it is that, uh, and by the way, my name is Carmen Martinez. I should start by introductions. I'm the uh, chair of the, uh, of the transportation committee. And, uh, you know, we have our, our members here, uh, Paco, uh, Suman, Jeff 
Granum. We just joined by Valerie Fleming, who's another uh, member. Kalista uh, De Jesus, um, who has been voted in as co-chair, although she don't know it yet, but you know, that was her role before and she will continue. Um, so, and, uh, so this is the committee and you have our district manager Dante on and our assistant district manager, uh, Mia. So you have a good audience and uh, let us hear from you what, what your situation is and we'll tell you what we've done to try to help you so far. Uh, who wants to begin, Rebecca? Sure. Um, so I've lived on uh, Leopards Avenue between Washington and Bedford um, for almost 11 years. And it the cars fly down Leopards Avenue. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, and I just, you know, I thought maybe with the change in the traffic pattern at, you know, Lincoln and Flatbush, you know, maybe it would change because you wouldn't have the people cutting down, but it really, it hasn't changed a bit. And I think with the pandemic and everyone getting cars, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. gotten, it's gotten a lot worse. So that's why I'm here. And I happened, I talked to, um, we had the little health fair on Leopards Avenue this past weekend, and I was lucky enough to chat with Mia, and she told me that my timing was perfect because the transportation committee was meeting today. So. Yeah, and, and as I indicated, um, we actually sent your letter on to, uh, to DOT, mm -hmm. uh, and she's supposed to be looking into what's the holdup. Mm -hmm. um, and to confirm that they have indeed approved it and that if they're waiting for a letter from board nine, mm -hmm. it will go out as soon as they say so. Um, and you will get a copy okay. and we will, you know, we will work with you to make sure that that's done. Cause again, it's been a long time coming. Long time. Yeah. It's been a lot, I mean, it's been a lot of uh, controversy with regard to the traffic there. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, the denial of the of the speed home, the approval and the denial and the approval. So um, there's also, you know, they did some calming at the corner on Rogers mm -hmm. and Leffers, you know, with that with, with yeah, the so extended they, neck and everything yeah. else. But they didn't come all the way down no. to to uh, Washington Avenue, which mm -hmm. I had asked them. I said, well, if you did that calming there. Why did it not come all the way to uh, Washington Avenue, which needs the same yes. kind of uh, extend the neck and everything else that they put there? So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But we are we are fully aware of the situation yeah. uh, on yeah, that block. I, I figured it wasn't a secret to anybody. No, <laughs> no, no, not at all, not yeah. at all. Uh, Dante, you want you want to add something? Yes. Um, so this is just being brought to my attention uh, since I took over um, in March. I have a question. Does anyone know if if it was approved at one point in time, did the board submit a letter of approval for that project um, previously? Um, we would have to go back and look in the archives because Rebecca's email is actually dated 2013. Mm -hmm. Understood. Oh, okay. I know, I know, um, oh my God, I can't remember her name. Uh, the the other resident on the block that came to our meeting like two years ago um and she brought copies of letters that uh she had written to pat baker when pat baker was chair uh and she had copies of letter from the commissioner um denying and then she had emails uh and i, I know i have all that all that file and Francesca Leopold, who's a board member, had also submitted a request um, for the speed pump. And I believe there's a couple of DOT numbers mm -hmm. associated. Uh, and I will share that with you when I go over my records because uh, I think the year before last or last year, we had kind of a recap of all of the outstanding issues that board nine had referred to DOT that that had not addressed. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a couple of DOT numbers assigned to um, that situation because they were also concerned about um, that. I think there was a couple of accidents there as well yeah. at the corner of Washington mm -hmm. and Leffords. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because so the way that traffic is, was, is designed, there's cars coming up Washington before it turns into a two-way at the yep. gas station mm -hmm. and they take a sharp turn, um, you know, and then you have the traffic coming two ways the other way. And sometimes they try to beat the light in, sure in, in making the turn. So the car is coming this way, we're gonna beat this one. Yeah. And it's a whole convolute. And then there's a, a, a bus also turns there. <laughs> and sometimes the bus obstruct traffic because now you got the light on Flatbush and Leffers holding up that traffic. So mm -hmm. it becomes a problem there. It, the whole yeah. area becomes a, a, a traffic condition. And I think we even talked about relocating the bus. I mean, it's a whole bunch of things that were brought up to mm -hmm. um, DOT's attention by mail and also by email and also in person uh, or, you know, when we were having the meeting uh, with Diana and whoever was before um, so it's, they, uh, it's not something that DOT is not familiar with. They just refuse to cooperate. Uh, but this, those issues have been brought to their attention. All right, Paco? Um, yeah, I, I want to just flag on Lefferts. Uh, I'm around the corner from Lefferts and I see the same speeding that was described. I certainly think speed humps help, um, you know, in, in, in a subtle ways. I think what sometimes helps, you know, concrete and like narrowed roads, you go slower mm -hmm. versus a larger road, it's like a highway, you go faster. Um, obviously building more, pouring more concrete, those sort of things are very big capital projects for bus. They take years of planning. Sometimes just paint on the ground does a little bit of work that helps, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm driving and I see more lines, like it helps to some degree. And I remember a few years ago talking to maybe two or three DOT liaisons before, um, Nathan uh, Al Albert, I think was his name, um, talking to him about Lefferts and asking if DOT could just clarify if it is meant to be one lane or two lanes. And he had said, it's certainly supposed to be one. So I was like, how come it's not striped that way? And what I've seen some areas do is that they stripe the parking lane as like so, a really wide parking lane. So it just has mm -hmm. that visual narrowing. It, it, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just paint, it's gonna fade. Yeah. It's a Band-Aid at best. That's but, what they did on may, Sterling Street. You know, project. it shaves mm -hmm. five miles an hour off. Exactly, exactly. So I'm curious if they, if that's a perfect example. I'm curious if they could, in tandem with speed humps, maybe even before marking season is done, if they, if if it's still on their radar, or if we should formally request that they do the Sterling Street treatment to Lefferts, just to help visually narrow the road. I mean, still people will drive recklessly, but it, I don't know, maybe it's one other thing to uh, add to the mix. Yeah. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll suggest that as well. I mean, whatever we can do to um, alleviate the problem. Well, certainly. Uh, who's that? Kalista, your hand is up. Hey, to tag on to Paco's um, comment, yeah, I think we should ask DOT to clarify whether it's meant to be. I'm assuming it's meant to be a one lane on either side, but further traffic, another traffic calming idea would be to add a bike lane to Leffords is certainly wide enough to have one on either side, especially since the Lincoln Road bike path um, especially between Bedford and Flatbush is always, there's always double parking in it. Um, so it would be another east-west option. All right. Well, I know, um, I think it, it, it has ended. They were doing, and I, and I believe I sent the email to the, um, the transportation committee um, members uh, when they were doing the uh, bike expansion and 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 uh, they wanted suggestions and, and and stuff, I don't know how many people might have logged on to DOT and and put in some of the those uh, recommendations. But I know not only the recent one, but I think last year there was also uh, surveys that they were doing about bike lanes and things like that. So. Uh, we can certainly uh, revisit and see what is their plan for the uh, Crown Heights uh, Plegna area 
in terms of uh, bicycle lanes, uh, where exactly it is that they're looking um, to put these lanes and see if, if, you know, if any of the areas that we're talking about right now are being considered uh, as well. So we'll definitely look into that. And just one more comment to, um, to add to that uh, in, uh, inquiry is uh, there used to be a, a Shero bike lane. It's the least desirable bike lane, but there used to be a Shero on, um, on Lincoln Road between Flatbush and Ocean. And for those of you guys who don't know what a Shero is, it's basically a, uh, a decal of the bike path but you're pretty much sharing the road with the motorists. There's no like uh, solid line to um, to designate, you know, bike lane from the road. But it's better than nothing. And uh, ever since they they repaved it a couple yeah, of years ago, know. they never restriped it. And it's kind of uh, it's kind of uh, unhelpful to have a bike lane going east and west for blocks and then abruptly end at Flatbush when you know it's an obvious route to the park. So it would be good for us to inquire about that as well. Yeah, well, you know, a lot a lot happened on Lincoln Road between Flappers and, and Ocean. You know, they eliminated parking. <laughs> it, it just went crazy and, and, and has remained that way uh, anyway, as far as I'm concerned, trying to come through there. Um, Liz? Hi. I live on 81 Lefferts Avenue, and that's right there between Bedford and Washington. I just wanted to add, I did meet Ms. Hilton at the wellness, cent um, wellness fair, sorry, and she told me about the implementation of the speed bumps, and I was very excited because both myself and my mother witnessed um, this Uber driver, DoorDash driver, got hit right in front of our house yeah. by someone speeding. And when we go to take the bus, we take the 49. There's the 49 that you can get on right there at the church. Instead, we go all the way past Sterling to go back to the other bus stop by the pharmacy just so we don't have to cross the street. So I'm grateful. I mean, even my mother was like, please, they can put the speed hump right in front of our house because we live right in the middle of the block because it's just, it's horrible. I mean, we actually heard this man get hit by someone who was driving too fast and actually drove off. And then after he saw people come out, he turned back around, but was gonna leave the man on the floor. <laughs> and so I'm just like all for the speed humps, all for the bike lanes or anything to make it safer. Cause that's devastating. I mean, there's kids on the block. I don't see any of them mm -hmm. really playing. So I, I just and wanted a daycare. to- And well, there's a daycare there, right? Right. So mm -hmm. I just, I wanted to add that just to, to let you guys know, I, I'm all for speed humps, the bike lane, anything to make it safer. Cause it's like, that's devastating that you have to feel that you might get hit just trying to yeah. go across the street to get the bus, you know, just, I just wanted to add that. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. So Molly. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about the issue on my on my block, but I also just want to make sure that the Lefferts conversation is over um, as somebody who also bikes down oh, okay. Lefferts. Yeah, let, let us finish with that. So <laughs> yeah. if, 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 if there's nothing else as far as Lefferts, if nobody else has any other comment, um, you know, that we can uh, certainly uh, move on because there's, there's actually two of the issues um, that we need to discuss. Um, the uh, the Lincoln Road and also uh, the alleyway uh, situation. So you can go ahead, Molly. Thank you. And I'll just, um, as an aside, I do, I live on Lincoln, so I do sometimes bike down uh, Lefferts and I'll second that the bike lane would be amazing. Um, yeah, my husband um, drafted a, a letter and sent in, mm -hmm. and I saw that on Saturday there was um, a construction truck that sped down our street swerved to avoid a bunch of double parked cars and then um, crashed into five parked cars, hitting one with such force that it actually shoved and it was a utility van. It shoved it onto the sidewalk. Our elderly neighbor was walking along and almost was hit by this. She's still, I saw her this morning and she was quite alarmed by this. Um, Paco actually also lives in this building. This is not the first time something like this has happened on our street last October. A very similar accident happened, or I'm sorry, not accident, collision where somebody had stolen a car and then drove off down our block 
at a very high speed it so fast that it went out of control um and then he got out and ran away but in the process it damaged seven cars that were parked um and I actually just as like a measure of how common this is because lots of people also just get sideswiped like routinely on my block um informally there we live in an eight unit building and four of the units have had a car damaged from being sideswiped when it is was legally parked so 50 percent of our building has had this and i'm sure that that's true for every building on our block for people who and like it's just it's it's really dangerous to park on our street but it's also really dangerous for people who are walking down the sidewalk um trying to cross the street and and all that sort of thing and so you know, there's really, there's a bunch of issues, but I think the two main ones are, one, just speeding is out of control. And then the second is that um, there's really just tons of double parking. Um, I think, frankly, on a various mm-hmm. stretches of Lincoln, but on the eastern end, so the end near Nostrand of our block, there are just constantly, I would say, like five to seven cars that are double parked. And so people are swerving around them, right? It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. I'm annoyed when I have to swerve around a double parked car. Um, but it just, it adds up to kind of constant collision. So last October, when this happened, where this guy hit seven cars, I wrote to DOT in requesting speed humps. And the answer I got back from them, I pulled it up, was... Um, Thank you for your correspondence with the Department of Transportation. The issue that you described is not under the jurisdiction of this agency. This matter will be properly be addressed by NYPD. End of story. <laughs> so I kind of at that point was like, oh, like, I don't know. But then, you know, this afternoon or this past Saturday when this happened, everyone on our building and our block, people were standing outside. It was a scene, right? Because everybody, because it was a lovely Saturday afternoon. People were outside, you know, kids were playing on the sidewalk. Um, I know Paco has a three-year-old daughter who plays on the sidewalk right in front of our condo all the time. And um, it just scared us. And I just think we need speed bumps. We also probably need, and I I don't say this lightly, but I think some increased ticketing um, from from NYPD or sanitation or whoever double, double parking. about the double parking. And again, I, you know, I don't love doing that. I know that those tickets can be really onerous, but I also just think that it's gotten so out of control. Um, so my, to my two cents, again, like it's affecting our whole building, our whole block. I think people are really fed up with it. Um, and we just love to see, you know, and then maybe something else, there might be other kinds of like traffic, kind of more passive traffic calming measures, like, you know, uh, that I, I am not an engineer, I wouldn't know though, but I just know that this is just, it is just a matter of luck that um, our next door neighbor um, wasn't just hit by this cascading utility van. Um, mm. So th- that's that's all I've got, but we would just love the community board's help. This is something I think that is just, you know, I've tried the the standard outreach to DOT. <laughs> yeah. So as far as you so as far as you're concerned, um, there was never any requests made for a spin speed hump on your block. Oh, you know I think of? I think everyone who lives on the block has. I mean, not everyone, but I think lots of people have requested them, and DOT just says no. Um, and I'm I'm honestly not sure why. Um. It's such a problem. I mean, the speeding is like, there are times I work in our, the front of our building. I like, I, I work from home and my office is up front. And so it's facing the street and all sometimes people are speeding off and it's so loud that my coworkers can hear it through zoom. <laughs> and even mm. meetings like that's how loud, you know, people are just racing, like honestly kind of drag racing down our street sometimes. Anyways. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, recollect if there was any request from that block, from that particular block. Uh, do you guys remember any from the board uh, uh, in the office, if there has any, any, been any requests, any prior requests? I would have to check tomorrow, go on to the yeah. server and check, especially for older numbers. Yeah, because I know if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost sure there is humps on Lincoln between Rogers and Bedford. Yes. So, so that being the case, 
you know, I don't understand, which is actually, let me go back because it's the same thing with leopards. You know, there's sweet homes on leopards between Rogers and, and, and Nordstrand um, and Rogers and Bedford, but somehow, you know, yeah. from Rogers, you know, so I don't, I don't know how, why uh, some people that they told no and others, you know, another block in the same strip uh, is denied, you know, so it's, it's, it's just a crazy stuff with, with DOT, with this speed home denial. It's, it's just crazy. I know in my block, it took us five years, you know, we had to write letters and write letters and write letters because, you know, Sterling Street begins at Washington and that it's a long block. And when they try to catch that light, whee-hoo, they just turn that corner and take off to try to catch that light on Rogers. And we were denied like five years with Port and Port and Port and Port finally uh, we got the speed hump and then they repaved the road and didn't put back the hump. So we had to stay on them on that because they for, they somehow neglected to come back and, and put the speed hump. But, uh, we'll look to see if not, uh, you, you know, you can definitely, um, and I know that a lot of time they want somebody on the, on the block themselves to submit the request to the board and then the board and does their own letter, whatever, you know, so uh, and there's, there's a whole bunch of sample letters that, and stuff that you can write up. So we'll definitely, you know, get you help work with you to get your request in formally. We're going to look first to see if there has been any previous denial, but uh, we'll definitely move forward with a request. Um, and uh, your photos and everything, uh, actually, they, they did have it up. Uh, Diana did respond. She wanted the uh, request to be put in directly onto DOT. Did your husband get, your husband should have gotten that letter? He was able He's, to do yeah. that, yeah. Right, so you gotta go in that link uh, yep. and put it in. And when they give you the uh, copy us, when they give you the DOT uh, okay. number, then we, you know, we just follow up based on their number on the status, okay? We'll do that, yeah. Thank you, Paco. Um, you yeah. I just want to follow up and say that um, I know, I think it was either six or seven years ago, I know I made a request on, on this block before okay. these two severe incidents, but uh, I would just second what Molly said of um, the, the speeding is out of control. I am terrified crossing the street with, with my daughter. And like, the, it, what's interesting is it does feel like a lot of it is stems on one edge of our block, that it's more than Nostrand Avenue corner um where there's a lot of double parking um and you know I, I i i always try to lean more towards design over enforcement and like self-enforcing design like i'd rather not have nypd coming anywhere near here i you know i don't know if they can really be i, I don't know if their discretion is is is, is that good in, in, in so many ways so you know i think some of the reason that there may be speeding on on my block of Lincoln may be similar to Lefferts in that Lincoln is a little wider. It's wider than like Maple Street, mm -hmm. um, you know, where I think Maple Street also has a bike lane like Lincoln, but Lincoln has like another buffer. There's like a two or three feet just of like painted zebra striping yeah. kind of. So it makes it in theory wide enough to double park and to drive. And so people do that. And, you know, people never want to scratch their car so like if you make it just too tight for them to do that they either drive slower or they choose a different route that i wonder if in tandem with like molly submitting the formal request to dot and you know we heard um from rebecca before mentioning lefferts with humps like i wonder if would it be wise for us as cb9 transportation committee to kind of request a, a larger bigger picture like a speeding study like a corridor wide of maybe we have a lot of east-west streets, you know, in, in our grid, or, or maybe we just say Lefferts and Lincoln, or, you know, do we want to think a little bit bigger so that way maybe DOT puts more resources at it to do a holistic view rather than just, eh, let's deny this one little thing, let's deny this one little thing. So, Paco, what I need you to do, because that is part of the need assessment that we need to submit, for fiscal year 2023. Right, I uh, so I need you to. I will do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, good. And if I'm not mistaken, if you read the, the fiscal year 20, I think we talked about the speeding and, 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 and you know, and the need for, for some measures to slow down the traffic, but all of that is what, exactly what we need uh, to submit for the need assessment. Okay, so Perfect. that's your homework. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dante, you want? Yeah, a uh, quick question. So um, for the cars that are double parking, does anyone know, are they the same cars or is this just like random people who it's just a nice spot to double park or is it the same individuals? I think it's a mix. So okay. um, for people who know the neighborhood, Culpepper's mm -hmm. is on our corner. And I think a lot mm. of people like run in, right? And I get that. I get that. Like, totally uh, but it so that's a part of it and those are not repeat folks um but there's definitely a couple houses on our, our block who throw like big parties and i think that that's it's the same folks who show up and just like sometimes i'll come home late night and there's like 15 cars double parked in a row you know and my right. suspicion i mean i don't like i don't really you know sit out there and like confirm <laughs> the same right. cars. but if i had to guess yeah. i'm i'd say there probably are some repeat folks and i'll just also second you know what paco said like if there's a way to not involve NYPD, like I'm all for that. And I think that would be our, everybody's preference, um, you know, to the extent that it can just be like a sort of civil ticket at most, but I, you know, it's just, it's getting dangerous. And so thinking through what that looks like, you know, again, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a traffic expert. I just really am alarmed about the state of our block. And so, well, um, I'm I'm very familiar with with that block, and it is a very active block on weekends. Um, exactly. Because a lot of time, although I live on Sterling Street, a lot of time I turn on Lincoln to come down Washington and get over to Sterling, and I know that there's always you know guys hanging out outside their car, they're talking, they're drinking, they. You know, and so it's it's a very active, active block. So I can I can tell I can attest to that. Okay. Uh, real quick. Um, in terms of the double parking, I mean, when do you think it's at its peak? What time of day, or evening, or night? So that's a good question. I don't know, Paco, if you have a sense of that. Um. I think it's probably evenings, honestly. But is that what you would say, Paco? I would say evening on weekends. I mean, weekday it's afternoons. Like, it, it, yeah, weekday afternoon. It's probably the nice weather, really, when, That's actually when exactly. people want to be hanging out outside. And like, right. I don't blame them. And like, I mean, I, I know a bunch of the guy. Like, I don't mind people. They should be hanging out. You know, some some of them live there. Some just are friends coming by. Of course, they should hang out there. Um, but like, they should park a car wherever is safe to park a car without making someone else side swipe seven cards. So, um, yeah. On Lincoln, Thank you. On Lincoln Thank you. between Bedford and Flatbush, it's various times in the afternoon and morning, especially on the weekends. And um, right at the intersection at the light where um, Washington meets Lincoln, it seems to turn into a two way, like a two lane where there's two cars and then you have one trying to turn right on Washington and then you have the other. So I think there needs to be type of striping or way to keep that from happening because then it's very difficult when you're riding in the bike lane and, and you know, you're not only swerving to, you know, go around the uh, double park cars, but then you get to the light and you have to squeeze or ride up, you know, and walk the bike on the sidewalk to get around the two cars or the row of two cars that are, um, at the intersection. Yeah. Well, Lincoln, Lincoln between uh, Bedford and, and Washington is, is a whole a whole uh, a whole lot of work that have to be done a lot. Yeah. I mean that right, driving through that block is like being on a rodeo. It's like Whoa! and you know, yeah. and don't let that be because I drive it all the time and it's like, oh my God. The first time when I I, I almost broke my head on went through my the, the car because I didn't even realize that there was all those uh, dips. And it looks like no matter how many times they supposedly fix it, the dips come right back. So um, that's one of the streets of, that we put down for capital project. They, they really need to uh, do a whole lot of work on that block to alleviate um, that problem. 
So we then dealt with uh, Lefferts, Lincoln, and now we're going to uh, Ms. Charlotte. Hello there, everyone. Thank you very much for um, paying attention to this. I live at 22 Miami Court. I've lived there over 30 years. And uh, I think my neighbor was online. I don't know if she's still here. But um, we have a, an alleyway that services uh, 24 homes. And uh, the street, my, uh, Midwood Street and Maple Street, um, cars block the alleyway entrance. So several times a week, we can't get our garbage or um, recycle picked up. And it, it's really a big problem if, I don't know, can you see this? How the car is, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, any, even one car pulling out into the uh, alleyway causes the sanitation truck not to be able to turn and come in. Um, and sometimes it's not only Midwood Street side, like this one is the Midwood Street side, but the Maple Street side as well. And cars on, they don't realize that that's blocking the sanitation uh, truck. So we have uh, contact sanitation department several times and they said that, uh, you know, please take this to the community board. And I really, um, you know, it's really a big problem the last four or five years, we've had to call them several times during the week because we have our garbage picked up on Tuesday, it's garbage and recycle, and then Thursday and Saturday. And when they can't get in, our garbage piles up. Sometimes we have to take it back inside. And it's just a big problem, not only for us, but for the sanitation department. Right. And um, your, your concerns were referred to, um, to DOT. I believe I sent you the copy. You have yes. two DOT numbers and there's also um, other numbers have been assigned so you actually have really, I believe got a four case number oh, because the, the last correspondence that we got said that um it's been referred to the borough engineering office oh, okay for them to go out and determine what's the actual best solution um and you know once engineering go out there, they may determine that is, is you know, the, the no parking is sufficient or they might extend the curb. Uh, so mm -hmm. if they extend the curb, it's, you know, and do the sign at, at the same time, it's better because if, if, if your curb is extended, then those vehicles cannot park anywhere near the entryway. Exactly. Because what happens, you know, is that, you know, the curb is come, kind of, it kind of just give you enough in, in the draft, the truck enough room to go in, but if right. they cut those curves further and then do the no parking, they will you know, yes. right, right, and mm -hmm. uh, and and maybe just draw some of the lines. You know, how sometimes they draw the parking right. lines so that you know you cannot park beyond that point. Right. So, um, if I didn't send it to you, I think I did. The second notice from DOT saying that they referred to the borough. Uh, engineering department. Oh, you oh, to, I uh, I'll take a look. Right. For them Thank to you. determine um, what exactly it will take um, to alleviate that situation. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, for everybody that, that that's on um, on this meeting that have issue, like I said, we're going to work with you, but we encourage you to continue to come to the meeting and particularly when the representatives are in attendance to just stay on top of them because, you, you know, both. yeah, yeah. Because, you know, DOT has a way to kind of like, you know, if you don't stay on top of them, they drop the ball and they lay back and you just, you know, but if you make a point of coming to the meetings every month saying, hey, we're still waiting, we're still waiting, what's going on, you know, and, and also bring them up to date on what's happening. You know, if there's any accidents since the report, if there has been, you know, or other instances where you know you have started, you had your garbage out there for for a week and not being picked up because things have gotten worse, and particularly now in the winter months, you know yeah. if you have snow accumulated and then you got parked cars. As you know, it all can become um, kind of an, uh, a yeah. big issue. Sometimes it's so, three weeks um, you can't get it picked up. Yeah, 
So we're definitely going to follow up on, on all of the issues that you guys have raised, but also come to the meeting and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stay on top and hold us to task. Make sure that, you you know, uh, things move along the way they should. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate it. So, thank you. Thank you for coming in and sharing your concern. Uh, the board is, so that's what mm -hmm. the board is there. We, they're there to help. And trust me, things do get done. Okay. okay. How often do you have it every... Uh... Every every Wednesday? first uh, Wednesday, except for okay. November, November is going to be the second uh, Wednesday because I I'm, I'll be going that first week. But okay. um, we'll add you to the uh, e list, Thank and you. you will get all, that way you get all, and come to the board meeting. I mean they they also virtual, you know come to the committee meeting and come to the board meeting because you get to hear what other committees are doing. There's other committees and. Environmental, you have a sanitation issue, you know, you can come to the environmental committee and, 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 and work with that committee, making sure the sanitation does what they're supposed to do, you know, because if I'm not mistaken, sanitation can also ticket. If they, if those mm -hmm. trucks cannot get in there, sanitation can ticket those vehicles, okay? So they, yes. they're also not doing their job. That's true. Yeah, they can ticket them. Yeah, really appreciate it. It's such a problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention. See, we, we don't like for the community to have this kind of issues and just sit around, you know, wondering, oh my God, how can I get this out? You got a community board, you have elected officials, you have people that you need to, you know, you can reach out to for help. But don't, you don't have to do things by yourself. You know, we're, you. Here, we're here to help. So always reach out, feel free to, okay? Really and it also gives, a, gives us stuff to do. Otherwise, we can just meet and be like, hey, so why you did this stuff? <laughs> I have to hop off the call, but I do just want to thank everyone for listening. And it was oh, no. yeah, wonderful. No, thank um, so thank really you so much, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for coming. And um, Dante, we'll send you the, um, the complaint number. Yes. Um, thank you. Yes. Tell them to go in that link. Submit this. Uh, give us the DOT number. We'll do it. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll follow up. Thank you. Okay. You're Thank welcome. You. Thanks so much. It's pretty better. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right then. So that was that was good. So now um, I guess we can move on to well, Park already has an assignment for, for the uh, need assessment for fiscal year 2023. But I mean, when you listen to this kind of complaint, you listen to these issues that, that the residents raise, it kind of like, you know, raise a flag of things that we need to be asking um, the city to fund. You know, whether it's a study on, on, on speed, whether it's a study on, as a matter of fact, um, Yako called me concerning the uh, Parkside um, bike lane uh, project. Uh, he's saying that he someone called him and was saying that it's creating a problem for um, and I told him for emergency vehicles, right? So we all know that those those things that are, that you see coming into place now are long-standing project. That Parkside, Ocean Avenue, Flatbush, like all of those things have been at least five years, if not more, in the making. There was meetings. And there was all kinds of discussion about it. Um, DOT is supposed to do studies on how all of these projects are supposed to affect traffic flow, whether it's emergency vehicle, whether whatever. So if, if they are now put a project into effect and it's affecting emergency vehicle, then obviously they didn't do proper studies. So this is where we have to say to them, hey, you know, you obviously didn't do the studies because if you change this traffic pattern and you added this bike lanes this, and all this stuff, and now you have emergency vehicle having a hard time getting through, you're just creating a hazardous situation for the community. Um, so uh, we're going to get more information from, uh, I told him to have the person either contact us and an email to the board or give him further information so that we can look into this because there's no way that we can allow now for them to, you know, implement a project that's now creating, you know, uh, a hazardous a situation for the community. You know, well, you're in an ambulance and you got so much time to get to a hospital and now, you know, you, you can't even get 
to the hospital in the, in the amount of time that, that you need to. Now so you're Carmen, talking about, you know, endangering people's lives. Carmen, let me interrupt you for a moment because mm. uh, I don't know what's necessary to validate the complaint from the um, neighborhood uh, member, but I can tell you firsthand, I've been caught on Parkside Avenue at least three or four times since the bike lane has gone in. Uh, and regardless of the time of day, I was there yeah. this, this afternoon. And because they have no space for an emergency vehicle to pass going, uh, that's an east-west corridor, uh, mm -hmm. and traffic is lined up in both directions. So yeah, if an ambulance was there, I'm not sure what the plan was supposed to be where people are supposed to move because let's face it, if that ambulance is all the way back at the park at Park Circle and headed towards Ocean, the traffic at the light, which is almost a quarter of a mile away because that's a long stretch there along the parade grounds, they're not going to hear that siren back then. Mm. You no, know, it's it's just not a, a, a well thought out uh, plan as it relates to uh, emergency vehicles. So, you know, I don't know how many of us need to go out and, and see it, but it's a problem. All right, well, you know, and, and thanks for sharing that because again, that, that is the kind of stuff that we need to hear in order to force this agency to take corrective action. Uh, because as, as I was saying, they're supposed to study those kind of things. They're supposed to figure out, okay, if we install this bike lane here, let's see how, you know, how it's gonna interfere uh, with, the, with the traffic flow. And um, I don't deal to, you know, they tell you they study things, but I, I seriously doubt it because there's no way that there should be any problems as a result of them putting these bike lanes if they did the proper studies, okay? So, well, so, it's I would just just, so it's not just response. emergency vehicles, it's vehicles, period. Yeah, I would yeah. love to hear their, their answer to the question, though. Is Was there a plan for emergency vehicles? Mm -hmm. And if they say, yes, there is, let's, let's hear what it is. Yeah, yeah. And why it's not working. Mm -hmm. All right. So thanks for sharing that. I haven't been, I, I haven't been on parks. I know sometimes, I, you know, when I get ready to go to Fort Hamilton Park, I go that way, but I haven't been going in that direction. So I need to just make a trip just to look at, to, to experience it, I should say, so I can talk firsthand. Okay. Uh, Pierre Albert, welcome. And you are? Hi, yeah, Pierre, um, community resident, um, former staffer to Assemblyman Kamara and some other local electeds. Um, pleasure okay. to be here this evening. Um, actually worked for you once upon a time. I don't know if you remember me. I was eight years younger. <laughs> uh, eight years younger. Um, so um, my question is for, for DOT and for the speed bumps, um, do they have a plan in place where they regularly monitor certain blocks and perform like a review or like a needs assessment? Or is it purely just based off of do they purely just base it off of community residents um, raising a concern or issue? Because it, it sounds like they just, they don't do any regular studies. They just purely go off of the community. Well, let me just say, and and um, I haven't been in the board office for a long time. So maybe uh, Dante and, and Mia can elaborate, but for years, and this is going back before I even joined the board, there has been requests, and I think it, it, it continues to be uh, included in the need assessment, where there has been requests for a traffic study for Board 9. And year after year after year after year, they, they talk about the same thing, budget and this and that, and they don't, they, they don't have the resource. So we, we are kind of aware of the fact that there has to be a serious traffic study done uh, in Board 9 because population have increased. Uh, you know, there's, there's been, uh, uh, the, the, the infrastructure has, is, is decaying. Um, so that is something that we keep pushing for and will continue to push for. Uh, 
so they're not going to take it upon themselves. Let's just say they're not going to say, you know what? Let's go do a study of this area. Let's go do a study of that area. They basically rely on community board um, and, and, and uh, complaints from residents about certain issues to, to decide what it is that they feel uh, is needed in certain community. So with regard to the traffic as, you know, it is contingent upon board nine to make those requests and continue to make those requests. And, you know, whether they keep saying is, 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 is a matter of budget, it's a matter of money, it's a matter of whatever, we have to get the elected official to buy into it and do letters of support. When we submit our budget request, it should be accompanied by letters from all of the elected officials in the area saying we are 100% behind board nine in this request. And that, and that is exactly the route that we need to take. Uh, so we need to do a whole lot of lobbying um, to our elected officials, particularly for those complaints that are not new, that is things that we have been like asking for for years and years and years and years and years. Um, and, and we keep getting the same runaround, you know, oh, uh, you know, there's no money in the budget. Oh, we have to, you know, we have to look at it this way. We have to look at it that way. So, you know, the answer is no, they don't come out and say, we're going to do you a favor. <laughs> we have to say, this is what we need and you need to come out and take care of this situation. So um, as part of our, our uh, need assessment for 2023, we will continue to ask for that traffic study uh, and, and, and justify it based on all of the complaints that we have been receiving, uh, all of the accidents, all of the you know, traffic congestion in the morning is a, is a nightmare. Uh, they change oh, yeah. the traffic pattern, they, you know, they, they eliminate lanes, uh, and, and it's just, it's, it's a nightmare. You know, a 15-minute trip now takes you 45 minutes to an hour, you know, so, um, so we will, yes, we will ask for traffic. And, um, okay. and like, I know one concern um, that I have is um, on, on the street, it's on the corner of Rogers, um, and it's on, um, I forgot what that, it's on the corner of Rogers and Clarkston, where they're, they're, they're doing construction on that new building. Um, mm. um, it's Clarkson, yeah, it's the corner of Rogers on Clarkson, the block right before that is Bedford. Um, they're doing construction and they just have this huge like orange barrier right at the corner. And I'm sure that it could create some accidents as people turn. I don't know why they created this orange barrier that's so wide. The corner is on um, Clarkson, the corner of Rogers. Is that where, where the deals used to be or does, they used to be? Yeah, the Dollar the Tree. They used to be okay. the Dollar Tree in the supermarket. Okay, we have to look into that. So they, so they got a big orange obstruction yeah, because it looks like they're they're building a new building there. Yeah. But like um that is a bus only lane, but like right when you turn, so not cars now have to turn wide and they could possibly go into the lane of the incoming traffic. So every like cause um I turn there often and every time I turn there, I'm just like, man, this is an accident waiting to happen. Mm. Okay. We'll 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 definitely look into that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for bringing us to, that, to our attention. All right. So, any, any anything else? Any any other suggestion? And I know we send you the, the the request kind of late for for your input. So, um, you know, if you have some to give us this evening, please do. If not, and you just like start emailing us tomorrow. Uh, you know, as things come to your head, no matter how you might think, ah, this ain't gonna fly. Um, just send us whatever thoughts, whatever idea, whatever suggestions you have, and we find a way to put it all together into a plan. Um, so no idea is too small, no suggestion is ridiculous. It's, it's just like, just throw it out there and we'll make vegetable soup out of it. Um, so please give us your input and, and not just for the committee members, even for the constituents that are on. If you think of something, you know, particular on your block, the next block where you drive, where you shop, where you kids go to school, uh, that's in the district, 
just shoot us an email and say, hey, you know what? I think the board should try to get this and I think the board should to try to uh, get us that. We only have like a week left. Is it a week? Um, I'm asking submissions to be in by October 21st. Our hearing is going to be October 26th. Uh, right okay. before the general board, yeah, and then I have to type up the report and submit it by the 29th. So, okay, yeah, so you have a week, yeah, it to us <laughs> at the end of, you have a week at the end of next week. Um, like I said, just shoot an email, you know, just say, Hey, you know what? What well, I we want the meeting, something came to mind, I forgot to bring it up, but you know, just, just put your thought down. I think we, we turned in a pretty good plan last year, so you know, I'm, I'm looking for the same or even more. Um, so please make sure that, um, we do what we need to do to uh, bring you resources to the community, but we need input because, you know, we're not everywhere. Like, you know, you live on a block, I live on a block. We all need to just put our thoughts together uh, to make sure that the district is covered. And tell us what you see and what you need. Hi, okay. I have a quick question. This is oh, Val hey, Fleming. Hi, Hi, I was kind of, I'm kind of like at the armory and over here at the same time. But I know. I'm walking home now and I just wanted to know, is there a way that, I guess this is kind of enforcement with regard to the electric motorcycles for the delivery people that are still kind of riding on the streets, on the sidewalks, and you don't really hear them until they're like right up on you. And also, um, I don't know if this is a part of enforcement as well. Um, the, I guess the mopeds or the young people that are on the dirt bikes that are, there's no license, no nothing. And they just kind of commandeer the road still. So I don't know if that's an enforcement issue. And I, get, I don't know if they have to be there at the right time, but I do know, um, I want to say it was two Sundays ago about, I don't know, it seemed like 200, 250 bikes came up Rogers Avenue. I don't know where they were going. This was about four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, they had some people, they stopped the traffic from going through, you know, to let the bicycles pass. And then once a, a session of the bicycles pass, then, you know, they let the cars go through. But there's just some things that are just happening. And I don't know if that's an enforcement issue and that's not really transportation. It sounds so, to me and, like, it sounds like an enforcement. Okay, because um, I don't know if there's um, any information going out to the people who are delivering food and things like that of what the proper way to use your electro electric bicycle. I'm not sure, um, but I still see a lot of them on the sidewalks. Should they not be in the street? Yeah, that's why I say it, it, it's an enforcement because I don't believe you're supposed to be on the sidewalk with uh, uh, with an electric uh, uh, motorbike or anything. So, okay. so and 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 I know that they do because a lot of time you're walking down the street and you know they almost knock you over. So that that is definitely an enforcement issue uh, in terms of then you know being off the sidewalk and they're, they're not supposed to be on the sidewalk from what I recall they're not supposed to be riding those things on the sidewalk. But they do. Yeah. So yeah that that's an enforcement. So if there if you know if there's a particular I mean what I would suggest like I don't know I, I know the delivery guy from my Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you know you know that you know the delivery in your area <laughs> yeah, because you see them coming to your neighbor's house and your house and whatever. Right, right, so right. So you can basically point to to you know the culprit and say, you know what, you know, the, the Chinese restaurant in the corner, they they delivery guy right on the sidewalk so that they can and, and maybe have a conversation with the, the, with them themselves and just say, you know, your your guys are not really supposed to be you know riding on the sidewalk. We don't want to create a problem, so maybe you should make sure to let them know that they should not uh, be riding those those uh, e bikes in, on the sidewalk. Yeah, and okay. we can, you know, and we can bring it up to the attention of the uh, the enforcement unit at the police and the traffic enforcement to you know how they how they plan to handle that. We, you know, is there some plan they have? You know, is there something they have in place to to uh, deal with that situation before somebody gets hurt and, and also um the the plumbing spot on rogers you know what's the story with them with this 
deal with the cars on the sidewalk and, and things like that, you know? I know they have a business there, but are they not supposed to comply to the deliveries and to have the actual um, vehicles parked on the street so that you have to walk by the vehicles? Now that that is something that was dealt with. Oh God, we talk, I, and, and the board probably has files in the computer. I'm I'm trying to remember who we refer that to, but I know that we dealt with that situation uh, a while because, ago. Yeah, yeah, we dealt with that situation a while ago, and I believe we had either we had conversation with them or they came to a meeting. Um because doing no parking on, on Rogers, they had all those trucks on the sidewalk um, in all kinds of situations. You know, I, I have to have uh, me on them looking to, to see the record on how we addressed them the last time. But I know that we dealt with that situation a while back. And, okay. And, and it, yeah. yeah and, right, thank you. and we did, we had conversations. I, believe, I remember walking over and even having conversation with you know, the guy inside the place. And then they, they came to a meeting and came up with some excuse as to why they were doing it. And it seemed to have been kind of alleviated for a while. Yeah. Okay, so we, well. we, can, we can revisit that, uh, but there, there should be a file in the board for, for that, uh, that prominent spot on how the okay. situation was addressed. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Jeff, your hands up again, or is that from before? No, uh, I did want to mention one thing. I'm not sure who's responsible for it. It's it may be sanitation, or it may be the uh, MTA. Uh, roughly a month and change ago, I was over on Nostrand at the SBS bus stop. And I think everyone's familiar with the SBS bus stops. Those are the ones that are um, reconfigured so that you walk out into the street on a new island that they construct, right? Now, the construction of that additional sidewalk necessitated them building something that I like to call a moat, right? There is... Um, it's like maybe about a foot across. It's the height, it's the depth of the sidewalk and it's covered by a grating on a hinge. The amount of debris that's caught in that moat creates a really un unhealthy, unsanitary condition with standing water and sewage just backing up. The day that I was there was really so bad. I took pictures of it which I can, I just have two pictures which I can share. But the fact is somebody who has to be responsible for that is not taking care of it at all because the amount of debris caught in that moat contraption was not just from a week or a month. It looked like it hadn't been touched for the whole summer, right? And this was towards the middle to the end of August that I had seen it. I don't know what it looks like now. But that's something I think that anybody who lives anywhere in CB9 who's on this committee, when you go past those SBS bus stops where they have created that island, you will know the moat that I'm talking about. And just take a look and see if it's now something that uh, is becoming an issue for the community. Now, what, what stop was that? I'm sorry. The stop that I have pictures of is the Nostrand Avenue stop uh, between Empire and Sterling. I know exactly Starling. what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. I'm All glad right. you brought that up because that was actually already on my on my list of things. Oh, so so you see, so so you you aware of that situation? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I yeah, I have photos of it at the office as well. Okay. So Jeff is 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 going to be uh addressed. Thank you. Tuki. Uh, 
Yeah, I just wanted to say to Jeff that in April, I did a community cleanup with another Crown Heights resident and we went down Nostrand Avenue and we definitely noticed those islands um, by the SPS stop. Uh, we picked up the that area at that time. It was covered in like sets of clothing. I don't know what people were doing over there. Um, but obviously since then it's it's accumulated again. So yeah, I, I've definitely seen that. Oh boy. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to follow up on that as well. Jeff, I, I've seen the same thing. I'm pretty close to it. I've reported it uh, via Twitter to MTA thinking it was their, their domain and they actually clarified it is Department of Transportation. And um, if I, I can't find the, the, the request number that I have now. Um, if I can, I'll, I'll forward it to the board. But I, I did flag that for them as well. And you're right, the, it's not just a little bit of dirt. It's like I saw weeds that were growing tall enough that they were you know, from the ground, but then up that foot that Jeff described the sidewalk to be, and then coming out through the grate. So for, I mean, weeds grow fast, but for them to grow a foot and a half tall means Someone's really dropping the ball on just basic maintenance. Oh, okay. So, so you, so you, you had a DOT number for it, Paco, and everything. Um, I have to look and see if I can find that number. Um, I, the the Twitter thread that I have now, where I flagged it for MTA. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it finished, so I, I I don't know if I only flagged it for them and then didn't follow up all the way. Oh. But I'll, I'll I'll verify if not. Okay. But it sounds like Dante also had it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh oh. So, uh, Carmen. Oh, I'm this is Jeff real, sharing. Oh my yeah, God. I'm not real proficient at this, so you are seeing it. Yeah. Right. So that's that's one of them. And these are what Paco was just talking about. You see how it's you can see through the grating. You can see the garbage underneath and the mm -hmm. foliage growing up through the grate. So those, wow. that, I mean that that caught my eye because that's really this this picture here is really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. With remarkable efficiency, and that's the beauty. Not some of the wow. Minerals, these and okay. So can can you can you share those pictures uh with with uh with the board so we can uh use it, send it over to DOT to so that they can see. Okay, I can just let me know what email address to send them to, and I'll send them. Okay. Or you can send it to me, and I'll forward it. Okay. All right. All right. And and, and 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 if you have pictures, Parker, you can do the same, and that way we'll use it as backup for the uh, complaint. And so I'm just saying that um, we did have a, a unsurmountable or insurmountable amount of rain, or I don't know what word I should use, on September, was the first or the second. But if we have trash and debris like this that are collecting in these areas, that mm -hmm. contributes to the inability for the water to go where it's supposed to go. So mm -hmm. it seems as if, you know, um, the city, I, I hate to say, has dropped the ball when it comes to cleaning up some of these areas. Because I know on the corner where I live, um, I've had some um, people in my neighbors to try to pull the weeds and get the trash that we can, that we can see. But when you look down into the corner catch basins, there's all kind of trash down there. Mm. So I don't know who is responsible for at least coming through. Is there a, a system that they come through once a quarter, every 10 weeks or something to, to help us? Because it's ridiculous. It's because well, the well, trash is just... Yeah, DEP is responsible for, for those uh, drain issues. They're responsible for, for the cleaning. Yeah, that's the Department of Environmental Protection. So we have to, uh, well, now that they, you know, now that uh, the district service cabinet meetings are starting, these are all things that uh, will be brought up to their respective agencies um, to address. Uh, so everything that all the everything that you all have talked about tonight 
all of that stuff at, at the next uh, district service cabinet meeting. I'm sure the district manager is going to share all of these concerns uh, with the representatives. And then uh, we'll give you guys feedback as we get feedback. This is the foundation. Right. So thank you. And, and, and again, please make sure that when you see this kind of stuff, you know, just go ahead and email the board. Let the board know what's going on. Uh, you know, you have to be our eyes and ears. Sorry about that. So you have to be able to, you know, let us know what's going on so that we can in turn turn around and uh, take care of it. Okay. So I want to say that um, I can testify that with the help of the board, um, they were able to clean up the Firestone on Bedford and Empire. Um, the amount of trash and abandoned cars and everything that were over there through the board, as well as with the NCOs, they really helped to clean that spot out. So I want to give a shout out to um, the board. Yeah, for following yes, up. yes, absolutely. I, I mean, they have a system over there now. It seems that if you try and park there, some automated announcement starts blaring to let you know that your car is going to be towed away. And ever since they implemented that, there is nothing. No cars, the garbage is almost non-existent. They're really doing a fantastic job for maintaining a, a property that's basically abandoned. It's just vacant. Doing a wonderful job. Call from wireless. Hello. I watch up. Yes. Oh, oh, I couldn't unmute myself. I'm like, <laughs> all right. So, um, anything else that uh, anybody has to talk about? Any concerns? Any good news? Any happy news? Any new recipes? Anything you want to share before? We Is there finish? any news about about the Firestone property, Carmen? Any word on what's about to happen or in the works? No, I, I haven't heard anything. Um, I know that um, you know a lot of people in the community have been staying on top of you know complaining about garbage. I know Pam on our block. She's always calling 311 and uh, also, you know, people that live at Evers Field and around, I'll talk about calling. Um, I actually hate to have seen them going and it happened so fast that uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see uh, what they're talking about um, doing with that, that big uh, lot. But nothing so far, no, no gossip, no rumors, no nothing, but Soon, I'm sure soon, soon we, we will hear something. All right. So, okay, this is not transportation, but I'm putting a plug in for the Major R. Owens Health oh. and Wellness Community Center located on Bedford Avenue between Union and President Street. We're having um, uh, informational sessions. Um, we had one tonight. We're going to have one the next two Wednesdays. So if you're available, please do um, go to the website, sign up or pop by if you can. We're asking that you bring your vaccination cards or some proof of vaccine so you can come and visit facilities. Currently, they are having some people that are using the basketball, the basketball courts and the soccer fields. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to come and see. Forget all the articles you read in the newspaper. Come let your eyes and your ears be a part of this experience. And this is the end of my commercial. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Valerie, I have to be that you did a wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a fabulous facility. So if you can come out, please do see. We're going to have something from for, for eight week old to 80 years old, swimming, basketball, cultural arts. We're going to have so many different things. Yoga, it's going to be phenomenal. So if you can come out, please do. And they're going to have some things that are free. They're going to have some senior pricing. So it's going to be something for everyone. It is a it is a beautiful facility. I I you know I had the benefit of of seeing the uh, 
from the inside. So it is it is nice. So you guys should just go go ahead and do an info section so you can see uh what's coming, what's coming soon. Thank you, Valerie, for, for that commercial. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Oh, I, I just I wanted to flag. Uh -huh. Sorry, I just wanted to flag. I sent it uh, just a little before the meeting, but I gave a rundown of a, a number of issues that some were that were on our radar already, and that okay. I had updates, and then some that were new issues. Some we kind of already spoke about today, but um, you know, we we could do it via email. But I just wanted to flag that for everyone, make sure that they saw that, that okay. big list, and uh, hopefully we can it. work a lot of it into the the needs assessment. Great, great. Thank you, Paco. Most definitely. Sure, thank, you. Thank, you. Um, thank you so much. So although our agency gets to the sub, we did have a pretty good informative meeting. We got to share, we got to uh, hear from the community. And thank you so much. Thank everyone for coming. I uh, hope everybody had a fantastic summer and an even greater year coming up and that we get a lot accomplished, okay? So thanks everyone. Thank you, you have a good night. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank good, you. Night. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.